you heard Jean Mary Tan Liu Jin's speech about her 12-year legal battle with the university. We first met her here at Hongling Park in January 2017 when she told us she had already used up her life savings fighting this 12-year legal battle and she needed $6,000 court fees in order for her suit to finally go to trial. And she did not have $6,000. And so, we arranged for a former university intern to meet her. He helped her to crowdfund the $6,000 and her case went to trial. Isn't that a great story? Former university intern helps to crowdfund court fees for former university students so that can sue the university. I want to commend Jean for her 100% persistence and total commitment to seek accountability. Another round of applause for Jean, please. Ask yourself, how many Singaporeans will do what Jean has done? 12 years, life savings, and she's still trying to appeal, but she has to pay the security to NUS in order to appeal. War Chuan. 坐了十三个小时的飞机刚回来所以本来是很累的但是现在看见你们这么多人我没有这么累了为什么我们的政府没有开口呢为什么我说政府没有开口我二十年写了几千张文章啊分析政府自己的统计问政府很多问题问政府为什么没有透明没有为什么没有跟人民给个交代有回应吗为什么政府不开口有很多人问我你不怕吗很多人问我你不怕吗本来无一物何处惹尘埃闭上梁山 is the government so silent? In the last 20 years, I've written thousands of articles analyzing government's own statistics most of the time, asking for transparency and accountability. I never get any substantive replies. Why is the government so silent? Let me give you some examples. Have you ever heard the government tell you what percentage of the total workforce are non-Singaporeans? No. They only tell you 37% of the total workforce are foreign workers. The other 63% are locals. Locals are PRs and Singaporeans. Why? Is it that they cannot break down the locals into PRs and Singaporeans? Why is the government so silent? If you can break down the unemployed people into Singaporeans and PRs, 
Surely you can break down the workers into PRs and Singaporeans. Why is the government so silent? You have been hearing this for many years already, almost every year. Oh, we will curtail the influx of foreign workers. We will help Singaporeans to get jobs, to upgrade, to get good jobs, to get good pay. Yesterday, the Ministry of Manpower released its labour market report. As passed, increased by 11,000. There are now 196,000 as passed foreign workers in Singapore. As passed means the pay is 2,300 to 3,600. You mean these are the jobs that Singaporeans don't want to do? You mean these are the jobs that they cannot get Singaporeans to work? In addition, the 186,000 on the employment pass and the e-pass. So in total, excluding work permits, we have 380,000 people on S-pass and e-pass. Is it any wonder when yesterday's labour report showed you that for the last quarter last year, of all the people retrenched, the PMETs was the highest in percentage, 79%. This is the highest ever in the history of Singapore. For the whole of last year, PMETs also highest the whole year, 75%. Also a historical high. I turned 65 last November. So I'm the Merdeka generation. So in the budget, I was quite amused when I heard what are the goodies that are being given to my generation. $200 top up per year to MediSafe for five years. So you give me $200 to my MediSafe, to help me to pay for the increasing healthcare costs, to pay for the increasing premiums. Every year, 200. This is helping me. MediShield Life premium subsidy, 5 or 10%, depending on how old you are. Oh. Do you know, or maybe you forgot, huh? the four-year transitional Subsidy for MediShield Life is ending in November this year. You see, four years ago, when they introduced MediShield, okay, we help you. Huh? So uh, every year, you, we give you a subsidy, right? The subsidy will drop, drop, drop. Come November this year, no more subsidy. Four-year transitional subsidy end. So I calculate for people like me, what does that mean? In November, my MediShield Life premium will increase by 81%. You give me 5 or 10 percent, and then you increase 80 percent, is that helping me? So when questions like this are asked, why is the government so silent? Where is the accountability? Actually, my friends in the Merdeka generation would call this adding insult to injury. Let me give you an example. Additional $1,500 premium subsidy if you opt in to care shield life. Hey, if you opt in to care shield life, your premium is much higher. Every year increase by 2% and you help me by giving me an additional $1,500. At the end of the day, throughout the years in the long run, I still pay more money. What kind of benefit are these? You know, so often, when you watch the budget, they, they will project a deficit. Oh, and then they end up with a huge surplus, right? It's not as bad as your uh, you know, youth Olympics. Huh? It's not like 300%, right? But how can you have a budget that so often project a deficit, and then you end up with a huge surplus? Look at the, look at the current year. The original projection was deficit of 600 million. And what is the net, re what is the final result coming out? 
600 million deficit minus become 2.1 billion surplus. Now, the next year, even more funny. They are projecting a $3.5 billion deficit for the next financial year, 2019. But if you add back all the so-called one-time transfers to trust and endowment funds, like the Merdeka Generation Package, like the Long-Term Care Package, $11.2 billion they are charging off as a one-year expenditure when this money is to be used in the future for many, many years to come. What kind of accounting, uh, uniquely Singapore accounting? When questions are asked like this, why is the government so silent? You know, in the last 11 years or so, the total budget surpluses is more than 30 billion. We have the highest budget surpluses per capita in the whole world. The cash budget surplus is even worse. In the last 11 years or so, it's more than 200 billion. So every year, people ask, I ask, why is the government so silent? The answer is behind you. Where is the accountability? For those of you who turned 65 last year, you were in for a root shock. Because, you see, under the CPM minimum sum scheme, you're supposed to get your money every month for 20 years from age 65. All of a sudden, the 20 years became 28 years to age 93. Now, when you have your retirement account balance at 65, originally they pay you for 20 years, you get this amount. Now they say pay you for 28 years. Obviously, the amount is less. Have announcement in Parliament of this change? Don't have. Have announcement in the media of this change? Don't have. Where is the accountability? This one really an insult to injury. Eh? One newspaper said, citing the CPA board as a source, Oh, you know, because we pay you higher interest on your CPA account, that's why... You can get it for 28 years or 30 years instead of 20 years originally, and the amount is the same. That is a one bloody fat, fat lie. The amount has reduced. What do you mean the amount is the same? Let us not be funny, okay? The additional 1% on your retirement account was implemented in 2008. The additional Extra 1% on the first 30,000 after age 55 was implemented in 2013. You mean to tell us in 2008, 2018, you, got, you, got, uh, you have a, you can see the future that in 2018, you're going to change the policy to make it 28 years instead of 20 years? My toes are laughing. This is the kind of accountability that we get. Why is the government so silent? Last week. Oh, my dear Singaporeans, don't worry, okay? Your HDB problem uh, will go away because in May, government's going to announce relaxation of use of CPF to pay for older HDB flats. You see, the problem now is once your flat is over 40 years, uh, a lot of people cannot buy. Why? Because they start to reduce the use of CPF to pay for the HDB flat, older flats. So I said, don't worry, we will relax this. You know what that means? Ask you to use more your CPF to buy the flat, which eventually at 99 years also becomes zero. So your CPF is gone, and now even more of your CPF will be gone because they allow to use more of your CPF to pay. Oh my God, this kind of government. Where is the accountability? When questions like this are asked, why is the government so silent? Healthcare. Your annual contribution to MediSafe accounts in total is about $10 billion. Your interest on all the MediSafe accounts in a year is about $4 billion. You add 10 and 4 together, you get $14 billion. 
This is the inflows from healthcare to the government. What about the outflows? The government's operating healthcare expenditure in a year is about 10 billion. The total withdrawals from MediSafe to pay for medical expenses and insurance premiums is less than 4 billion. Huh? So the inflows to the government exceed the outflows? What does this mean? With only government that from a cash flow perspective doesn't spend any money on healthcare. Another way of putting it, we are the only government in the world that makes money from healthcare. Because if you track the cash flows, if the in is more than the out, this one is always getting bigger. So when questions like this are being asked every year, people ask, I ask, why is the government so silent? Where is the accountability? I only have 10 minutes. And I'm feeling very tired now. But let me end by saying this. Accountability is the mother of all our problems. Because if the government is always silent on the questions that ordinary citizens ask, and I can tell you, uh, maybe in the future, less people will be uh, brave enough to ask more questions. Thank you.